Okay, so now we're um, at the drawing board and I have my paper that is set into grids. It's one inch grids and each of the grids are broken up into uh, four. So that's just going to help me uh, visualize uh, my map right now. But this map, I, I just redrew my map from the field and it's not to scale. Um, this is not measured in any way and I'm just clarifying my measurements. So I have my path. Um, coming in all those directions, my fence, which is the what I measured off of, um, the arbor, and I have a bench, the oak, uh, the azalea shrub, and the general shape of the garden bed. So, um, so I, I, we, we took the measurements outside in a certain order. We measured along the fence, and then we measured straight measurements off of the fence. And um, I'm going to just draw those in the same order that I measured in. So I'm going to draw um, to the fence post. I'm going to um, not draw this to scale yet. Um, each fence post is here. There's four. And then I'm going to draw in straight lines off of the fence post that are perpendicular to the fence post. So my gridded paper really helps me with that. Um, and I just want to make sure that I have all my elements labeled, even in my rough draft sketch just so I know what everything is and make sure it's very clear. Then I'm going to use this map to draw my map to scale. So that's the next step. Now we're going to learn how to uh, take this map with good measurements written down nice and clear um, and translate that to a map to scale using our, our bar scale. So I start with the first fence post. It's my straight line. Uh, the first fence post to the second fence post is 9 feet and 8 inches, and then I'll do the rest of the fence posts accordingly, and then all the measurements that are perpendicular to that fence post. So using this bar scale that I made, I find 9.8 um, feet, and then I draw this first line out 9.8 feet. So some of these points you can see on this map don't really fit in my grid. They don't, they're not necessarily perpendicular lines off of my fence line. So some of those points you need to triangulate. And again, triangulation is measuring the distance of an object from two known points, then finding where those distances intersect. So each of these points uh, are measured to the oak. And I don't know where the oak is in space yet, but I do know that this um, is the center of a circle, and this is the radius of my circle, and I need to find where this circle and this circle intersect to find my third point. So um, I'm going to translate that onto my two-scale map, and I want to first find eight feet. Um, so that's five, six, seven, eight feet on my bar scale. This is a bow compass and it's measured out to eight feet. This is the center of this circle's radius and I'm just gonna kind of draw an arc. It's a little bit different actually. It's maybe a little bit more like nine feet. Um, and then I draw the arc from this fence post to the face of the oak, that distance. And that distance was 10 feet, 2 inches. And where those two circles intersect is where that face of my oak is. So this base map is now to scale. I've taken my clear drawing with my clear measurements on it and I translate it onto um, another drawing, which is on gridded paper. And I made sure that all the elements that were very important stayed on in this drawing. Well, I might have lost things that went off the map, um, but that's no big deal. I, I kept everything that was important. So I have this shrub that was an azalea. I have my forsythia along the fence line. I have the arbor and the paths. I can now see the relationship between the paths and the shapes that they make. And I have the bench in space as well as the large oak trunk. Now something that you want to do for all of your base maps is you want to make sure they have labels. And this map doesn't have labels yet, so we'll do that together. 
you also want to make sure your map has a scale and that's really easy to, to make. I'll show you how to do that. And you also want to make sure it has a north arrow. So those are the three elements your base map must have. So this um, kind of paper, this gridded paper, makes it really easy to make a scale for. Um, each one of these large squares is exactly one inch, and they're all divide up, divided up into four smaller squares. So I found what, that the size of my space fit really well onto the page. I could use the whole page if I made sure that each two squares equals one foot. So um, every larger square actually equals two feet and I just followed accordingly. You don't need a ruler or you don't need a straight edge at all to make your base map. But I did find it helpful to have a straight edge just to make my lines a little bit more clean. So on my scale, I have all the way up to 10 feet. That's a good measurement to have so that if you um, lost your scale or you made a, co a copy of this, you'd always know that this distance is 10 feet and you'd be able to measure it elsewhere on your map. So since this base map is going to be what I'm going to use to layer all of my, my analyses on top of it, um, I want to make sure it's very clear and that I can understand what I have. I have all the elements that I need on it. So I'm going to just make sure I label all the elements on my map. And I use very clear handwriting if possible. Or I get a friend to do it if I don't have clear handwriting. <laughs> I, um, at first I didn't know what species this shrub was, but um, I learned that it's a type of Asian azalea, so I'm going to just mark that on my page. And this is a forsythia, I want to mark that. So I have all the major trees and shrubs labeled. And I know that this is an oak. I, out in the field I measured that it was a two and a half foot diameter. So I um, made that on my map. And I have the general outline of the garden bed that I know will probably change once I do a design. But So I, I lightly ghosted that in. And for a large expanse, I usually just write a label with a few arrows showing that it's taking up that whole area. So this is the garden bed. 